Hey everyone, it's Chase Chapel, your favorite Facebook advertiser, and in this video today, we're going to be covering how to actually structure your Facebook ads. That way you can see the full campaign build out from campaign start to the ad set level where you select your audience, all the way down to the actual ad level. And by the way, in our last video, y'all did over a hundred likes and over a few hundred subscribers. Y'all are absolutely incredible and this video wouldn't be possible without all of you. So please do go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe as well so that way we can get into the content. So the first campaign we're gonna be building out is going to be our conversion interest. And this is when we first launch our campaign. We wanna structure it to where we start with our conversion interest first. And then all of these other campaigns you see here will come after. So let's go ahead and jump into a new ad account where we can actually go through this process and you can follow along. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit create and you're going to wanna select conversions because if you are optimizing for purchases or leads, you wanna use this objective because you wanna automatically start teaching the system to get you the result that you're actually wanting to go after. So whatever your actual goal is, you should choose that specific, ob specific objective. And ours is purchases, so we'll choose purchase conversion campaign. What we're gonna do first is we're going to hit continue. And one of the things that I really like to do is create name templates. So if you hit create name template, it's gonna take you into your ad account and you're gonna be able to create a naming template so that way you don't have to name anything as you're going through, it'll auto name it for you, which is gonna save us a ton of time of not having to name every individual item. So I'm gonna hit create and start adding a component for the template. For the campaign level, I like to do uh, you know, the CBO, so that way I know if it's on or off uh, for campaign budget optimization. The next thing I like to do is give it an actual text field, so that way I can add some custom text. And that's the first one that I do on the campaign level. So for the ad set level, I like to actually select age, so that way I know who we're targeting, as well as choosing the ad set name, so that way we can have our audience show up there. And then for the ad level, I like to do the format of the actual ad so that way we know what type of ad it is as well as a text field so that way we can actually customize it. And adding a text field here as well so that way we have everything. And then just hitting save on each of these so that way we can continue along in the process. So once you've created your naming template, you just turn it on by selecting here and then we're just gonna title this interest because that is the type of you know campaign we're creating in the start. Next thing we're gonna do is go to the actual audience level. And this is the part where we actually choose who we wanna target and go after. The first step is actually adjusting your daily budget. You know, you can start with $5 daily. It doesn't have to be no more than a, a cup of coffee. Honestly, most people spend $5 at Starbucks, so you should be able to, you know, spend $5 here as well, because that is actually a reasonable price to actually get started as a barrier to entry with Facebook ads. So what we'll do is we'll set it to $5 daily. Now, if you have a $10,000 budget monthly, I'd recommend going to 10 daily on your actual testing. And then if you have anything over 10,000, I would recommend anywhere between 20 and 50 daily as you know your testing budget per each unique ad set audience. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit exclude and we're gonna exclude one of the audiences that we don't want to show up because this is an audience we want to go after with new customers. So we're automatically gonna exclude anybody who's already purchased from us before because we don't want to you know actually target anybody who's purchased because we want new customers. So we're gonna do purchase and then 180 days so that way we exclude that entire time frame, and then we'll just name our audience purchase 180 day. Next step is actually going to the detailed targeting and choosing a specific audience. So depending on the space you're in and what items you're selling, you're gonna to wanna to target unique interest to that specific niche. Now, you know, if we're selling an online course, what we'd end up doing here is just going after, you know, individuals who might be interested in Shopify because you know a lot of people who are into our content use Shopify so we would just type in Shopify here to see if it populates and then we would choose this actual audience and since it has 27 million people we're totally fine with leaving the detailed targeting expansion on because it's already a large audience and it could only help the next thing we're gonna do is continue scrolling down and we're going to check to make sure all of our, we're gonna change this attribution window from seven day click to seven day click or one day view. And a seven day click window essentially means that whenever somebody clicks on your ad after, as long as they convert within seven days, that's great. 
or one day view essentially means you know if they viewed their ad if they viewed your ad and they converted then that's also great because now you're getting a purchase and then all we're going to do is just copy our audience name and paste it here at the top and then we're going to move to the ad level. Once we're on the ad level, we want to turn off dynamic formats as that is something that will prevent us from stacking social proof later on and we want to stack social proof. And for the content, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually add a video. So now that I've selected my video, what's gonna end up happening is it's gonna be in a vertical format because that's the actual size that I you know, recorded this video in and we're finding that when we take TikTok content and place it on Facebook, it certainly performs better in terms of ROAS. So whenever we have a vertical format, it'll automatically crop adjust to fit the feed placements. And now that Instagram Reels have ad placements on them, we can start showing up there, which is really important because in order to show up there, you need to have vertical content. So we went ahead and selected our video. The next thing we're gonna end up doing is actually adding in some primary text. And what I like to do is just go to the site wherever we're sending these individuals and copying some of the text we actually have there. So I'll just go ahead and take this actual, you know, ad copy specifically and add it into the primary text. Longer form copy certainly works better for, you know, courses and online trainings because you need to have a lot of information for somebody to actually make a purchase decision. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to continue to scroll down and we're going to go ahead and add in the headline. We'll just take the title of this actual landing page and then we'll add a description and we'll just make that to get full digital access right here. And then we'll also add the link actually into the ad and then we'll add the link here and then we're just going to change this. We're actually gonna leave it as learn more because that is a good call to action. And then what we're gonna do is go ahead and give our ad a name. by adding the text here. We take the first line of the ad copy because that's easiest. And that way you know exactly what type of content it is. All right, so what we need to do now is to make sure that this ad's gonna show up in all placements. So essentially the main thing we're gonna do is actually, you know, crop it to the one-one ratio. So that way it shows up in feeds. And then we're just gonna leave this box selected which essentially tells us that it's gonna still be able to show on stories in the actual original format. So we'll go ahead and hit apply and then we'll save. That way it can actually show up in all placements and we're gonna get a lot of you know, delivery and it's gonna lower our cost per CPM. And then what I like to do is usually add an emoji sometimes just to see if that improves performance. So you can go to emojipedia.org to find you know, specific types of emojis that you might wanna actually end up testing and using. Once we actually paste that in there, that adds a little bit more flair to the actual video, captures his attention a little bit more concisely. Next thing we wanna do is actually you know, go ahead and hit publish for this specific one, and then all we're gonna do is after we publish it, we're just gonna turn off that specific ad. So that way it doesn't run and we can actually stack the social proof in the next step, which is a more advanced strategy, but you're gonna actually get to see how to do it. So what we'll do is we'll turn off this video. We'll then refresh our screen. And then all we're gonna do is hit edit, so that way we can start stacking the social proof. And then in order to stack social proof, essentially what you'll do is you'll hit use existing post. And now it's able to actually, you know, combine the likes from every single audience it's going to be in. Therefore, anytime somebody likes it and sees it, no matter what audience it's in, you'll see every single likes on that video, which is called stacking social proof. And it really helps gain momentum over the long run. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add URL parameters. I like to add dynamic URL parameters. So that way we can check in our reports uh, where the actual cells are coming from. You, you know, using tools like these are actually really great, especially with Surge.io. It's an ad tracking software for Facebook that's going to allow you to accurately attribute results between your Facebook ad campaigns and the actual website where you're getting the purchases so you know which audiences and ads are actually producing your results. Because you can actually track ad attribution much better and see exactly where your results are coming from within your campaigns. So in order to set that up, we'll go ahead and choose source as the you know, location it came from. That way we know if it's from Facebook, 
Instagram or some third party article. The next one is medium, which is usually your audience name. So we'll just do the ad set name so that way we know which one it is. And then campaign name, you can just do campaign name, nothing big deal there. And then campaign content is your ad name so that way you know exactly what ad is running. And then all you do is hit apply. And now we have URL parameters, you know, tracking set up. We actually have everything connected and we have a stacked ad where social proof is going to show up in every audience. So now we'll go ahead and hit publish on this a final time. So that way we lock everything in place. So that way, anytime we duplicate this audience, we have multiple ads. Now I recommend creating three to five ads at least. So that way you have some variations for testing and you can actually see what works best. But what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the actual audience step where we can continue building out audiences. And the typical recommendation here is whatever your actual budget is, you want to see how many, you know, $5 daily or $10 daily or even $25 dailies you can actually have. In our case, let's say we have, you know, uh, $50 for testing. That would essentially give us 10 audiences. So how we'd find 10 audiences is by duplicating this ad set, you know, 10 different times and changing each audience individually. This way we can actually see which audience specifically performs over time and then we can actually get into the steps on optimization. So what I like to do is actually scroll down to where that audience is located and hit suggestions so that way we can see what audiences are very similar to Shopify. And a lot of people who are in the Shopify space are in drop shipping, so we might choose drop shipping as an audience to target and you know remove Shopify itself. Copying drop shipping and scrolling to the top and just adding in it as the name. So that way we can continue along and just continue repeating this process 10 times. And essentially after you're done, you know, completing that process where you created 10 audiences, you can then go ahead and activate your ads and let it start running. And you know, once we actually get into the next video, we'll talk about the actual optimization steps that you can actually take. So please do go ahead and like and subscribe to this video so that way you can stay in tune whenever that video drops. Thank you.